Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Um, this video is an assembly video. It shows you how to put together our new breathalyzer kit. Now we've got a couple more breathalyzer kits coming that are a bit more intricate, but this one's great for parties. Um, it's a, a real hit the bar. All you really need is a 9-volt battery to operate it, a good 9-volt battery, because the uh, MQ3 sensor, the alcohol sensor, is a real power sucker. Anyway, I'm going to introduce the components now, and we'll do it piece by piece, showing you how to assemble it. There are a bunch of resistors, uh, 10 in total, uh, 8 470 ohm resistors, a 10k ohm resistor, and a 1k ohm resistor, a 2-pin terminal block, a monetary push-button switch, uh, the custom PCB, a uh, 7-segment uh, display, a MQ3 alcohol sensor, a uh, an electrolytic uh, 100 microfarad uh, capacitor, a ceramic 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor, 7805 5-volt regulator, 18-pin socket, and a program microcontroller. So first of all, let's uh, put the resistors in. Pay very close attention to this step. R1 to R8, the string right here, they're labeled uh, 470R. So all eight of your 470 ohm resistors are placed in this string. There's a resistor slot here and they called RX. RX is where you want to put your 1K ohm resistor. Now uh, down here, R9, it's labeled 470R, but really that's 10K. You want to place your single 10K ohm resistor in the R9 slot right here in the lower right-hand corner of the board. Now, it's labeled improperly, and that was actually my fault. It was a, a mistake on, on the board itself. So, R9 is 10K, R1 to 8 are 470R, and RX is your 1K. So, solder those all into place. Resistors don't have a polarity. It doesn't matter which way you put them in. So, after you solder those into place, we'll do the uh, capacitors in the regulator. Before we put our capacitors and a regulator in, I forgot to mention that we also sell these fully assembled at engineeringshock.com and at electroniclessons.com, which takes you to our eBay store. Anyway, uh, we're now going to put in our regulator and our two capacitors. The regulator, uh, the 7805, has a front side with writing on it and a side that has just ground on it. So if you look on the, uh, on the board, on the footprint, there's labeled 7805, three pins. On the back, there's white, which means that the grounding should be facing the back and that the writing should be facing the front like this. So put that in and solder it like that. Uh, you'll see it soldered in in just a minute. The electrolytic capacitor is goes in the C1 slot which is also labeled 0.1U and since it's uh, ceramic it doesn't matter which way you put it in. The uh, the C3 capacitor, the 100 micro, is right here, C3 100U. There is a plus sign on the left and as you can see, there's a long leg and a short leg. The short leg is negative, long leg is positive. So place your positive uh, lead, your long lead, in the left side here with the little positive symbol. Make sure you don't reverse it, as if you power it up, you might pop it. And nobody's going to be happy if you pop that. So, again, long lead left, short lead right. Start those into place. Now we're going to do the MQ3 and the, and the uh, seven segment display. Now what we're going to want to do is place them both in, but not solder them. Make sure they're both into place, and then solder them. Don't put one into place, solder it, and put the other into place, and then solder it, because you might encounter problems. So first of all, what I suggest doing is placing the MQ3 in. Now, by the footprint, it can be it can go in uh, two ways, really. Um, it's a little bit hard to describe, but there's a right-hand side and a left-hand side. Three leads on the right, three leads on the left. If you interchange it, it doesn't matter because the board has three right leads and three left leads. You can't place it in with the three right leads on top or bottom. It won't fit. But what you'll find is, uh, when you put it in, you might need some pliers to squeeze the leads in inwards a bit uh, to to get the hole, the uh, leads into the holes. Uh, it's really not all that difficult, but you might have to fiddle with it. So just uh, be patient. Put the, put the left side in, make sure that all, all three of the uh, leads are in the left side, and then use pliers to just uh, push the leads in on the right. And once it's in, you should be able to seat it quite nicely. Now you don't want to push it all the way down into the board. Leave about, uh, I'd say, about a half a centimeter between the, uh, the bottom of the MQ3 and the board. If you push it too flush on the board, you're going to stress the uh, sensor. Once you're done that, don't solder it. Then put your uh, seven segment display in. Now you'll notice on the lower right hand side of the seven segment display there's a dot. That goes in the lower right hand side of the footprint. So from a bird's eye view we want to place the dot in the lower right hand side. So once you have those both into place and you're happy with how it looks and everything's aligned, solder it into place and cut off the extra leads on the bottom. After we're done this, we're going to do the terminal block 
and the uh, button, and lastly we're going to do the socket and the pick. You'll notice that while it is a tight fit, it does fit in. You might have a little bit of trouble getting the MQ3 in there, but I assure you it's really not all that difficult. Uh, once you put the M3 in, MQ3 in, the uh, seven segment display should fit right in. Have the seven segment display flush with the board. Uh, and leave, as I said, about a half a centimeter between the bottom of the MQ3 and the PCB, and then solder. So, solder that in, and uh, we'll get to our button and our terminal block. The button only fits in one way, and it goes into our cell slot right here. So, uh, line up the holes on the button, and click it in, it should go flush to the board relatively easily. Your terminal block, right here. Make sure that the screw terminals right here are facing outwards, facing outwards, not facing the regulator. If you have the terminals facing the regulator, you're not going to be able to wire in your power supply. So make sure that this is facing out. Anyway, so out of those in, we'll do our, uh, we'll do our final socket, we'll plug our pick in, and we'll be off and test. This is very important. From this perspective, uh, on the footprint label, there's a label called IC1, and then of course there's the pick slot. Uh, Right under IC1, there's a little uh, notch on the footprint. On the socket, there is a notch on the left side of the hand side of the footprint. On the pick, on the program of microcontroller, there's a notch on the left side of the uh, microchip. You want to line up, when, from a bird's eye view, your socket, the, the, the notch on the left, to the notch on the, uh, on the footprint. And once you have that soldered into place, it's 18 pins, you want to make sure that you place your, the notch on your pick to the side labeled IC1. Now again, there's a notch on the left side of the microcontroller, a notch on the left side of the socket, and a notch on the uh, left side of the uh, microcontroller footprint. Line them up. If you plug in your, uh, your IC in backwards, you're going to fry it and you're going to be toast. So please pay, pay close attention to when you're doing that. Make sure that there are no shorts when you're soldering in your pick, or your, uh, your socket rather, because if you have shorts, it will not work properly. Once we're done that, we're going to hook it up. Test time. Now on the terminal block underneath, there's a uh, label called V plus and uh, GND on the right. GND is ground, so I've wired up uh, to my power supply a. Uh, and again, you can use a 9 volt battery to power this. I'm just using my uh, power supply. On the right, I have ground. On the left, I have 9 volts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to power it on. I'll walk you through the sequence. Turn it on. S E L. Select. So now it's waiting for you to press the little select button. So you're just about ready to, to blow into the sensor. But what happens is you press the button, it says CAL for calibrate. Now the first time you power this up, say in 24 hours or even in 4 or 5 hours, the calibration state will take about a minute. And this is the calibration state. So watch it. When it stops the calibration state, when it ends, it'll say BLO, at which point it'll start doing figure eights again and you blow into the sensor until it says DONE. And once it's done, it'll give you a rating from 0 to 9 how drunk you are. Now again, because uh, this sensor is, is new, it's do been dormant for a while. Uh, if you keep powering it up and down throughout the night, you shouldn't have to wait a long time for the calibration state. In this, in this instance, because I just powered it up for the first time, uh, it's going to take about a minute. Now, if I power this down once it's done calibrating and I come back in an hour, the calibration state should take much less time. If I keep going back and forth and every t five or ten minutes blow, you know, power it on and turn it, blow into it, it should take even less time. It's just if you leave it for a long time, it needs a, a time to calibrate because when you power up the sensor, the sensor goes, the output goes high and it slowly dips and the sensor is waiting until it reaches a certain point where it's safe to blow. Anyway, so this is just, just about, this is just about done. Uh, you've also got some outputs here, 5 volts ground and ANA. Analog is, a, uh, is the analog voltage coming off the sensor in case you wanted to splice to it for your Arduino. So it should be just about done. Sorry for the delay. Again, if I do, if I once uh, I'm done blowing into it once, I'm, I haven't had anything to drink. I've got another demonstration video. Once I've done it one full cycle, I'll do it again. You'll see the calibration state take probably less than a second. So it's been about a minute now. I expect that it's going to stop any second. Now, when uh, when you power it up, when you're done with it, unplug it because uh, what happens is the, the, the MQ3 takes a, a ton of current. It takes about 100 to 120 milliamps of current. And you'll notice that your regulator gets kind of hot. And you'll notice that if you touch the alcohol sensor that uh, the output gets kind of hot as well, or the top of the sensor gets kind of hot as well. There's a coil in there that has low resistance and it's getting a direct path between VCC, which is 5 volts, and ground. 
So this is taking a little bit longer than I, I had expected, but again, this won't happen. Once, this is the initial calibration once you powered it up for the first time within uh, several hours. And again, in this case, uh, I have just uh, powered this, this sensor up new directly out of the ESD bag that the kit comes in. Now, if uh, you're interested, email me and I'll send along a 9-volt battery connector that you can hook up to this. It'll just cost you uh, 50 cents extra and I can invoice you that directly. B-L-O. So now it's waiting for me to blow into the sensor. You want to blow directly into the sensor. I don't want to get in the way of, the, of it right now. It says D-O-N-E. Done. So now it'll scroll up if I have any alcohol in my breath and give me a level between 0 and 9. In this case, it gave me uh, 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get a beer. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to take a swig. I'll blow into the sensor. I opted to get... Captain Morgan's out. Sorry, probably a blurry picture, uh, as opposed to a beer. Now, if you want an accurate reading, you can't just take a swig of alcohol and then blow into the sensor. You need to wait five minutes after you've had your last drink. But just to show you, in this case, I'll press the button again, it'll say Cal. And the calibration stay will start. Didn't take long at all that time. One good blow into the sensor is fine. I just took a small sip. See? If you actually had that much alcohol in your breath, you'd be smashed. Like, genuinely. I just took a swig right now, so there's obviously a lot of alcohol in my breath. So that calibration state will not happen. I will turn it, I will power it down. Completely powered down. I'll power it up again. It should say S E L. Calibration, no calibration state. And then you blow, it will sample the ADC while it's doing eight, uh, figure eights, and then it'll say done, and it'll tell you how drunk you are between the level zero and nine. It's a novelty item, but it's a lot of fun. So thanks for watching, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video, and uh, take care, have a great day.